It's very rare for a government department to stand up and say it got it wrong, certainly not with the Defence Department. But after three years, it happened today to the families of four young soldiers who'd taken their own lives after appalling treatment at the hands of the military. Earlier this year, we told how these four families had gone to the previous federal government asking for an ex gratia payment to compensate for their pain and suffering. In that story, we revealed that despite agreement from both the government and opposition, the Defence Legal Department had been uncooperative in delivering a settlement. Today, all that changed. Now, not only has the government agreed to compensation, but it's also committed to investigate a scheme to compensate any other Defence families left in similar situations. Mark Bannerman reports. He was a wonderful boy, um, turning into a man. He was a great brother to Catherine, Joe and Amy. Even Amy today, she, she knows that David's not here, she knows that she's got a brother. And when she says that, you know, David's up there in heaven, it just cuts it. David Hayward was a young soldier with everything to live for. But in January 2004, after allegedly being bullied, he went AWOL from his barracks near Darwin. Two months later, he was found dead at this backpacker's hostel in Perth. He had taken his own life. For his family, the first hint of trouble came when a policeman turned up in their front yard. Mrs Hayward, I've got some really bad news for you. He said your son, he's, he's been dead, he found dead in Perth. That was it? And that was it. He said he's been found and I've just, the, I've had a phone call from the army to come and tell you that he's been found dead. To be quite honest, I can't remember a lot after that. The Haywards had every reason to be shocked. As they told us earlier this year, their son had been on the run for two months, but the army told them nothing. This was a clear breach of regulations. For Wendy Hayward, it was also a lethal error. Do you have any doubt that David could have been saved? Yeah, he would have been saved, 100%. there's no doubt about that. I'm just very annoyed. I just cannot believe that, that an organisation like that, that do have protocols in, in place, and they didn't follow it. The Haywards case, though, we discovered was not unique. In 2005, a Senate inquiry into military justice detailed the story of Private Nicholas Shields, a young soldier who killed his best friend in a live firing exercise. Despite clear evidence Nicholas Shields was in post-traumatic shock, the Army failed to treat his condition adequately before he took his own life. It's affected my health. Uh, I've recently had a stroke in the past 18 months which has left me uh, severely disabled. Life is just not the same, it's a struggle all the time. Um, because we have no future, as far as Nick's concerned, that's all gone, and it's really hard to cope at times. Three years ago, the Shields joined three other families asking the federal government for an ex gratia payment to compensate them for their loss. The Defence Department response shocked their lawyers. How would you describe the process of dealing with defence legal on this issue of the four families? The delay has just been extraordinary and beyond anything that could be considered reasonable in the normal course of things. The uh, government's whatever persuasion have no say in the running of defence. It now appears there was a fundamental disagreement between the defence legal department and the government. Today, the Minister for Defence broke that deadlock, announcing a decision to grant an ex gratia payment to all the families in involved. Years. Of course, uh, no amount of money can ever um, be enough to replace the, the loss of a son, but I hope it does assist, and I hope now that the families can have closure and move on with their lives. In Adelaide, the parents of Nicholas Shields were delighted, if a little overcome. I think he would be very pleased hopefully. And um, I don't think it would have um, progressed this far unless he, he would have wanted it to happen. I just know that he's, he's with us. Has only added to their pain but Defence Minister Joel Fitzgibbon did more than simply hand out compensation today. Like this, uh, he also gave an undertaking to look at demands 
that Defence set up a scheme to compensate other families that find themselves in similar situations. Of course we've also got coming a review of mil the military compensation scheme more generally to ensure that in the future um, cases like this uh, can be properly and definitely addressed. For the Hayward family, this was precisely what they wanted to hear. I urge other families in the same situation to come forward. We need to make a difference. We have to stand up for what is right. Don't walk away. It's for your kids. And there's a lot more people out there in the same position. This government is prepared to listen and prepared to make changes. So let's work with them. What can I do for the next 12 months to get ahead? Well, here's This is clearly an important issue for the government. Recruiting is down and the Haywards still stand by the advice they gave this program earlier in the year. Would you ever let your child go in the service again? Absolutely not. Time, no. Absolutely not. No. no. No, no way. No. Mark Bannerman with that report.